Good afternoon. It's 4.30 p.m. on Tuesday, September 20th, 2022. We will call the City Council meeting of the City of New Ulm to order. Item number one, consent agenda. Councilors, what are your wishes? I'll offer a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any additional discussion? Those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That motion is carried. Item number 2.1, public hearing on the 2023 MSAS improvement project. Uh, thank you, Madam President, City Councilors. Uh, public hearing for the 2023 uh, MSAS Improvement Project includes North Highland Avenue from Oak Street to Highway 14, that's in Millen Overlay, and North Broadway from 20th North Street to Casa 13, which is a full depth reclamation. Um, this project was reviewed by the Safety Commission at their October 7th, 2021 meeting and was recommended uh, approval as far as the project meeting the City of New Ulm Complete Streets policy. Uh, council reviewed and adopted the report at their November 2nd, 2021 meeting as well. Um, the city has a professional service contract with Bolton and Mink to assist with the delivery of the project design. Um, the engineer's report for this project included um, a report on the complete streets policy and ADA transition plan to the city. It is anticipated that this project will encourage uh, bidding from multiple contractors. Uh, we conducted a public pro um, open house for this project on June 19th. Um, and that served as an opportunity for property owners to ask questions, provide insight for the project design team. And finally, um, the federal project memorandum was approved by the uh, Minnesota Department of Transportation on July 7th. Um, this public hearing was scheduled by the city council and it would be my recommendation that we open the public hearing and go project by project uh, through the list, Madam President. So. Thank you, Mr. Stodheim. Yes, at this time we will open the public hearing and um, we have two items on the list. We'll read each of those one by one. If you would like to comment or have some questions, please come to the microphone, state your name and address for the record and you will be heard. Location number one, North Highland Avenue from Oak Street to Highway 14. and North Broadway from 20th Street to Casa 13. Hi there. Hi, I'm Karen Trollick. I've never done this before, so I'm not exactly sure what the process is. Okay. Um, I am here for the North Broadway and 20th North Street project. Um, I live on Broadway and 23rd Street North, um, so we're right on the corner there, I guess. My inquiry is as far as assessments to the residential area versus the commercial areas. Um, that being, um, that road has been used for numerous construction projects along with, um, like when the Boisman Bridge was closed, it was used for a detour um, for the flood and it was also used for detours for other projects. And I understand these construction projects are needed and required, um, but it wasn't necessarily for the residential area or more for the construction and business area. Um, so that, I guess, is my inquiry. Sure, go ahead, Mr. Um, Madam President, Mrs. Trollick. Um, this project is being uh, proposed to be assessed at what we consider 60% of what the full reconstruction rate would be for a normal city street um, due to the uh, scope of work and um, the use of that project. Uh, it is typical and past practice of the city to assess the adjoining property owners for such improvements. Um, the proposed assessment for your parcel um, at this time is $2,925. Um, again, those won't be finalized until the project's complete and um, we get through that process. So uh, we would be looking at finalizing those assessments in the fall of 2024. Um, at, at this time, that would be kind of the assessments part of that um, to finalize those. Okay. Okay, that is all I have. Okay, did we answer your questions? Yes. Okay, yep. all right, just wanted to be sure. Thank you so much. Yep, thank you. Yep. Thank you. And again, North Broadway from 20th North Street to uh, County State Highway 13. And we have no additional. And looking like nobody else wants to come up and speak, I'll just offer the resolution, waive the reading, closing the public hearing, ordering in the 2023 MSA as improvement project and authorizing the preparation of plans and specs. 
Second. We do have a motion and a second. Any additional discussion? Director Jorgensen, please call the roll. Councillor Mack? Yes. Councillor Christian? Yes. Councillor Wormka? Yes. And President Becker? Yes, that motion carries. Item number one, or 3.1, lawful gambling premises permit for Searles Baseball Association. I'll offer a resolution way of the reading to approve the issuance of lawful gambling premise permit for Searles Baseball Association to conduct lawful gambling at Social or 209 North Minnesota Street, New Ulm. Second. We do have a motion and a second. Any additional discussion? I'm just wondering because Social's closed, like how that, I guess that doesn't. It's changing ownership. Oh, okay. There we go. That makes sense. All right. Any additional discussion? Yeah. Is this the... This will then be the Searles baseball will be the guys who receive it. It's not a temporary thing or anything. Correct. It, correct. Okay. Those in favor, signal by saying aye. Resolution. It's resolution. Oh, resolution. Yes. Director Jorgensen, please call the roll. Councillor Mack. Yes. Councillor Christian. Yes. Councillor Warmka. Yes. And President. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes. Motion carries. Item number 3.2, annual off sale 3.2% malt liquor license. I'll make the motion to approve the issuance of an annual off-sale 3.2% malt liquor license to Family Dollar Incorporated at 1605 South Broadway for the period beginning September 21st, 2022, ending June 30th, 2023, subject to compliance with all city and state requirements. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Any additional discussion? Is this a new license? I've never recall ever having them. Have that be for family yeah, dollars, for family dollar, three point two. Okay. Um, I'm just wondering. It must be based on a need then, so that's good. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, any additional discussion? Those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed. That motion is carried. Thank you. <laughs> the item number three point three: annual on sale intoxicating liquor license and Sunday liquor license. Keep approving the licenses here. I'll make a motion to approve the issuance of the on-sale intoxicating liquor license on Sunday, uh, and Sunday liquor license for 209 Pub and Grill Incorporated at 209 North Minnesota Street, including Front Sidewalk Cafe, and authorize the transfer of license fees from the 214 North Minnesota Street to the 209 North Minnesota Street with licenses to be effective for the period beginning September 21st, 2022, and ending June 30th, 2023, subject to compliance with all city and state requirements. Second. Look. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any additional discussion? Those in favor, signal by say, stating aye. 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 Opposed? That motion also carries. Item number 3.4, liquor permit for athletic events held at the New Ulm Civic Center. All right. I'll take my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Approve the issuance of a liquor permit for athletic events held at the New Ulm Civic Center for Kasich Sports, LLC, doing business as the New Ulm Steel Junior Hockey Team for events at the New Ulm Civic Center, 1212 North Franklin Street, for the period beginning September 21, 2022, and ending June 30th, 2023, subject to compliance with all city and state requirements. Second. We do have a motion and a second. Any additional discussion? Um, Nicole, I was just wondering if you can tell me why they were both on September 22nd. Like, is that just a new date for something, or or all of these are on September 22nd or yeah, 21st? The soonest date. The with soonest. Because I just I thought that maybe the hockey one already had a liquor license, but I guess the hockey one is an annual one, so they come back about the same time every year. <coughs> oh, okay. I guess if they don't need it in the summer, the, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. All right. Um, those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That motion is carried. B and L Bar Alley Closure, Oktoberfest Celebration. I'll offer the resolution, waive the reading, to temporarily close the alley adjacent to their establishment for Oktoberfest celebrations on Friday at 5 p.m. to Sunday at 1 a.m. on October 7th and 8th, 2022, and October 14th and 15th, 2022, and authorize the extension of the B&L bar liquor license into the closed alley area on the requested date subject to conditions. Second. We do have a motion and a second. Any additional discussion? Director Jorgensen, please call the roll. Councillor Mack? Yes. Councillor Christian? Yes. Councillor Wormka? Yes. And President Becker? Yes, that motion does carry. Item number 4.1, summary of business conducted during board and commission meetings. 
I think we are going to be turning here in just a minute to Councillor Christian, who has an update for us. I think Mike's going to switch it, Dave. Just give him a few mm -hmm. seconds. Yep. Yeah, normally I don't come up here for the HPC report. There actually was no HPC regular meeting, but a special meeting was held for the artistic work and painting that's going to be done on the Vero building. And normally I don't provide pictures, but this is one that's, I don't want any counselor or citizen saying who authorized that, what not. So I do want, oh, it is up. All right, this was at the meeting. Uh, I can't give a lot of detail on it, just that Heritage Preservation approved it. Uh, the city manager's not with us tonight. He's been heavily involved in it with the downtown action team, the chamber, the artist. Hopefully at another meeting, he can give us all that detail and criteria because that knowledge I do not have, just the HPC report. So at least everybody gets to see it. Actually, Councilor Christian, I'm, I'm on. If you oh. can get to speak a little bit on it. I would appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. So um, we had a special meeting uh, last week for HPC to approve that mural. Um, that mural has been about about a year and a half in the process, um, you know, trying to get funding and stuff. Uh, the artists have gone through a couple of iterations um, of that. So it was initially approved by the um, mural committee. That's a kind of a subset of the downtown action team. Uh, and when that was uh, approved by the mural committee, uh, then we brought it forward to the HPC because it is a large, uh, it's basically going to cover their entire wall, uh, be 20 by 80, 80 feet, I think. Um, and so Nubera uh, gave it its blessing as well. Uh, so Nubera is on board. Uh, and I think uh, we were able to take the artist around. So he got to see a lot of the elements that are in there. Um, and what I particularly like about what the artist did took a lot of the things that are, are big in New Orleans that our New Orleans is known for, and he did put that um, his artist spin on it. So it's recognizable, but it's not just a life-like um, rendering of it. So uh, a lot of good elements. Um, Shells actually was also on board too. We did send the mural to them for their approval uh, because Shells is. We just wanted to make sure um, they were okay with how that was did. All right, thank you. So, yep. And then hopefully in the next week or so, um, the artist should be started. Well, well, that's great. All right, thank you. And uh, Park and Rec, I was not able to attend. I'll go through the donations. Uh, the only big item was on there that they did final approval of the fee schedule, and we will get to see that. That's it for me. Thank you. Any other updates? I guess October 12th, we're going to have a planning commission meeting uh, working with a consultant with the comp plan. Okay. We're going to be holding that virtually, but they also are arranging a conference room. So. Fantastic. Yes, nice to see the comp plan moving, continuing to move along. Transportation committee. Um, New Ulm bus has a name, the Herman Express. Things seem to be progressing with that. I There's like that. Hopefully, if things keep going on schedule, could be functional operational in October um, and then throughout the rest of the year be free rides while people are getting used to the the new bus route and plans I've had to correct some people on Facebook and whatnot that it will expand into the north side once the roads are open but things are going well with the new new Ulm bus line Herman Express we'll call it Herman <laughs> Express Mayor? I wanted to talk about the CVB. The lodging tax is doing wonderful. I mean, the rebound from the two years of COVID is amazing. We're setting records or tying records of recent years anyway. And Sarah, would it be okay if you came up and told us how the temporary lo short-term lodging stuff is progressing? Um, I don't actually have an update. At Just like you talked to John. and. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, Sarah Warmka, Chamber President. Um, so I talked to John briefly after the last city council meeting that was here when he presented to you guys. Um, but I know that the city is working on um, coming up with a permit licensing process to be sure that all of them are being safety inspected by the fire and then lodging tax being collected. I think the city is still on it. I don't have an update more than the last meeting. There might be as many as 30 of these places in town for all we know. 
Well, and some have more than one room also. And so, yeah, if you think about how many additional rooms that is, it's quite it's quite a few with more in the process. Jason the Kister told me he bought the southern half of the Herberger's building and he's going to turn the, the upper floors into Airbnb type of things. Mm -hmm. All of them. There could be as many as 14 rooms for rent up there. And I'll share that we definitely hear at the chamber, at the visitor center, that people want lodging close to downtown. So I'm looking forward to that. <clears throat> yeah. Great, thank you. <clears throat> Nicole, do you have any updates on if the city is going to be able to begin collecting those taxes? I know that was just a question. I checked with well, the state on the process. If we want the state <clears throat> to collect the lodging tax, the initial fee is ten to $15,000, and then there would be an administrative fee that would be deducted from the taxes when they return them each week or each month. So we haven't made that decision yet, but okay. it, it's a large fee up front to start the mm. process. Nicole, is that a yearly fee or is that a one-time That's a one-time startup fee. Okay. And then, like I said, there's more administrative fees each month, but like there is with the sales tax. Well, it's something to be weighed if the need for it is growing and expanding. Yeah. Right. Something to look into at some point. Um, any additional updates? Thank you. We'll move on to number five, old business. Now, item number 5.1, second consideration of ordinance number 2022-065, chapter eight, blight public protection exceptions. So council president counselors, um, this is the second consideration of um, the blight ordinance, basically excluding um, unregistered um, and inoperable vehicles um, from car dealerships and uh, repair shops. Uh, and I would like to note that this is kind of step one in a process that we're going to be doing um, to also address setbacks in the future. Um, that'll be coming before the planning commission and then looking at enforcement, uh, enforcement options as well instead of just citing, uh, uh, giving them a citation and then it just sitting there, we're going to get some, some other options. So this is the first step uh, in that process. Thank you. Being it's the uh, conduct the second consideration of ordinance number 2022-065, amending chapter eight, section 8.63, junk cars, household furnishings, et cetera, stored on public or private property. Subdivision two of exceptions, exceptions of the city code of the city of New Alm relative to blight. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any additional discussion? Those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That motion does carry. Item number 6.1, under new business, set the public hearing for 2021 <coughs> Utility Street and Alley Improvements, Group 1. Uh, Madam President, City Councilors, uh, this is the next step to finalizing the 2021 Utility Street and Alley Improvement, Group 1 project. Um, this is just setting the date for the final assessment public hearing, um, which is scheduled for October 18th at 4.30 p.m. Uh, the improvements constructed on the project are listed within your council packet. Um, yeah, the total amount to be specially assessed is $788,071, or approximately 25.2% of the final project cost of $3,127,346.67. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stoddheim. Uh, motion to approve the final assessment rules for the 2021 Utility Street Alley Improvements Group 1 project and set the date for the public hearing for Tuesday, October 18th, 2022 at 4.30 p.m. In, in the council chambers. Second. Motion and a second. Additional discussion? Those in favor, signal by stating aye. 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 Opposed? That motion does carry. <coughs> Item number 6.2, consent and affirm Mayor Sweeney's declaration of a local emergency for the purpose of facilitating a water main replacement project. Mr. Dalton? I don't know if Chris Mandelfeld wants to talk about Oh, or, or uh, yeah, it, it Chris Mandelfeld. Chris or, yeah. Robert, or Robert can touch on it as well. Okay. If Chris, um, is Chris is here, yes, Mrs. Mandelfeld. Good afternoon, councilors. Uh, Chris Manderfeld, Utility Director. Um, as uh, the agenda item um, discusses, um, we have found a 
leak on a raw, raw, raw water line uh, that goes from uh, wells 20 and 21. Uh, this uh, water uh, main goes underneath the Minnesota River. And um, it is probably 30% of um, the average water that's used um, for the city of New Ulm. And so this has uh, put us in a position where um, with winter conditions and with the potential of spring flooding, uh, we need to get this done as, as efficiently and as quickly as possible. Um, just for your information, probably four out of the last five springs have been flooded. One, um, this is also adjacent to uh, FEMA, a um, disaster area where um, the water was basic, or the wells basically were um, inaccessible for about 18 months. And so we don't want to get in the situation where this spring we have flooding and we're not able to get to that. And then with summer um, increased usage, we need to um, um, get this done as quickly as possible. So this falls under the um, Minnesota Emergency Management Act. Um, uh, Mayor Sweeney uh, declared the uh, water emergency. Now, I want, I just want, everyone to be clear that there is adequate and safe water. Um, what this uh, does is basically allows us to um, push forward the um, quoting process, getting uh, ordering supplies, that type of thing, um, because this is a large uh, dollar amount, um, over $500,000. Um, it just will expedite um, the bidding and the quoting process so we can um, get it done this fall yet. And so uh, Mayor Sweeney's declaration was good for three days. Um, we need the city council to approve that um, declaration that will then um, approve it until we have time to get the um, water main uh, replaced. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No need to delay. Yeah. I'll offer the resolution. <laughs> Wave the reading extending Mayor Sweeney's declaration of local emergency for the purpose of facilitating a water main replacement project. Second. Good luck. We have Get a motion and a second. Any additional discussion? It made me feel really powerful. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. That's <laughs> You got to vote last time. Now you get to have a declaration to help save the water project, water main replacement. See next time agenda. Wait. Next time. Are you sure you want to retire? No. <laughs> All right. We do have a motion and a second. It Any is a addition? resolution. Resolution. Yeah. Director Jorgensen, please okay. call the roll. Councillor Matt. Yes. Councillor Christian. Yes. Councillor Warmka. Yes. And President Becker. Yes. That motion carries. Item number 6.3, hardship deferral for the 2023 installment due for 2018 USA improvements. Madam President and Councilors, this is a deferral for a citizen who has applied for the last several years. They meet all of the requirements regarding age and property value. So there's no reason at this point to deny it this time around, okay. I guess. Okay. Being it meets all the Qualifications, I'll offer the resolution, weigh the reading, approving the hardship deferral for the 2023 installment due of $1,813.57 for the 2018 USA improvement charges for the property owner at 1116 3rd North Street, uh, New Ulm. Legal description is the rear 80 of lot 14, block 185 North of Center Street. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any additional discussion? Director Jorgensen, please call the roll. Councillor Mack. Yes. Councillor Christian? Yes. Councillor Warmka? Yes. And President Betker? Yes, that motion does carry. Item number 6.4, Preliminary City of New Ulm 2023 budget. Okay, give us a second to mm -hmm. get this up there. I guess I have to put that number in again. Okay, oh, here we go. One more button. Thank you. 
So we are, we've had a couple work sessions on the budget. Um, this is the presentation up to this point with the discussions that we've had. Um, I hate to throw a lot of numbers at people, but it's budget, so it's just numbers. So I will go through the presentation, and then if we want to have discussion on any particular slide, we can do that at the time, or we can go back again as well. So looking at this, this is just showing you that the history of the LGA, or the local government aid that we get from the state, um, increased a little bit again. So we're up to about $4.5 million. It's much needed. It's about uh, 10 to 15% of our budget each year. Um, so we depend heavily on this funding. Um, then, as usual, I mean, especially with inflation, expenses um, increased again, about just under $600,000, or 2.85%. And then there was a slight increase or decrease in revenues, and that's mostly due to changes in funding sources like the, um, the bond that we got for the help with the amphitheater and some of the ARPA funds that we used in, in the 2022 budget. Um, this screen shows you the levy history as well in relationship to the tax rate. Um, you can see where that tax rate kind of goes up and down over the last several years. Um, and then the levy continues to increase, which is normal with inflationary needs. Ideally, we'd see something more like that red dotted line um, where the tax rate hasn't changed, meaning that we would, be, we would be working within all our inflationary needs or the tax capacity. The city is growing at the rate that we need to support without having to change that tax rate. Um, and then just to show to a, an effort to keep that down a little bit, our debt levy has decreased quite a bit over the last several years um, as we continue to pay debt early whenever possible. Um, some of the things that are in the budget this year um, as far as overhead are things that we may or may not have control over. Um, health insurance premiums did increase 7.5%. That was a negotiated contract that saved us a lot. Um, our premiums probably should have gone up more like 50% for the year. So this was um, an incredible contract and a good timing. Um, wage increases, of course, for union and non-union. The union have those built into their contracts, so we try to match that in the non-union as well. Property insurance has increased 10% um, um, over the last couple of years, and the league is telling us to expect that again. Um, same with workers' comp insurance. It increased about 17%, and we may see that again coming up this year. So we're trying to stay within their recommended budget increases. Um, sinking fund contributions this year are budgeted at $915,000. Um, for 2022, it was $685,000. Um, typically, that's the place we've reached for first to bring budget down, so that's why they're lower this year. Um, and then we also added in, at this point, um, a fund to establish a blight fund, so dealing with those properties um, and not having to dip into the, the fund balance to, to deal with those as they come up. And then we did end up having to add in, uh, because of inflation, the three years that we've contributed to the battery building was not enough. So we've added in a fourth year at $50,000, and hopefully that would be the final contribution needed to complete that building. And then $117,000 of the sinking funds are budgeted to be used this year um, within the fire department to replace a truck and some tools. These are some of the other items that are in the budget. Now, these are ones that, um, for the most part, have been here in the past. Um, we've talked about these endlessly at the work sessions. Um, as directed the last work session, um, I, I reduced all of them back to their 2022 levels. Um, and then I did leave the Historical Society, which is a new request, as well as CAST, in the budget at this point in time. Um, we talked about having the groups come and, and explain their use of those funds and, and their need for them. So we left them in the budget at this point, and we will be sending out a letter inviting all those groups to come to a work session on November 15th to address um, their, their requests. There was also a discussion of an application. That I don't we, ha we don't have time to put that in place okay. for this year, but we will do that for the 2024 budget. Um, we thought this would be another way to, to at least get some input from them with the 2023 budget. Some of the other things that are in the budget that are out of the, maybe out of the norm or not really out of the norm, but some of the larger items, um, Christmas decorations have been in there for the last several years to um, start to build that downtown 
decoration a little bit more. Um, the bus route needs to be in there at a, the ma our maximum would be 25,000. Um, if ridership is good and, and the fees collected are higher, of course our contribution <clears throat> will go down or will be worked down by that. Um, the strategic plan is in there as well. We have half of that budgeted in 2023 and the remaining 50,000 would have to go into the 2024 budget if the plan is um, started. Um, there's an e-permit program within the budget for 23,000. There is also an annual renew or annual maintenance cost that will go along with that program as well. So that would be for building inspections so that they can start to use more of an online uh, permit program. Um, there is a contract uh, in there for the body camera and vehicle camera maintenance with the police department. Um, this would give us the support um, and the, the equipment we need and keep it up as we go forward. That one also will have an annual cost associated with it, which in theory we also have an annual cost when we have to maintain that equipment each year anyway. Um, the parking or the rec center parking lot seal at 55,000 is still in there. Um, there, was that the rec center or the civic center? Rec center, oh, we did the civic center this year, sorry. Um, so that's in there at 55,000. Two police vehicles, at a, which is about 120,000. That's the purchase of the vehicles and the buildup with the equipment they need. Um, and then we did put two, la two leaf vacuum trucks in there at 260,000. So that's the purchase of the leaf vacuum trucks themselves, as well as the lease of the tractors to pull those and the implementation of the program itself. Um, and then just looking again at those uh, capital fund contributions we talked about a little bit before. Um, maintaining that, or actually, it will be the second year of putting money in for Herman at 100,000, um, city facility improvements at 370,000, um, capital improvement, uh, and it's an infrastructure fund which saved us a couple years ago when we couldn't meet the bonding requirement um, at 100,000. Rec center equipment, we started that one last year or in 2022 for 25,000. Fire truck equipment at 200,000. Uh, the police equipment at 45,000. This gives them the ability to start to build up that fund as well as to repay the fire department for what they borrowed to, for the radios this year. Um, the battery building I mentioned, the 50,000 is the fourth year contribution and then starting that blight fund is also in there for the 25,000. With where this stands right now, um, I did get the tax capacity numbers from the county. The tax capacity went up an incredible 16.5%. Um, which tells you that everyone's property values are also driving that increase. Um, so with this budget as it is right now, it's a 12 and a half levy, or levy increase, but the tax rate itself would go down 2.79%. Um, but if you, if you look at that, um, most with people's values going up, if you had a $150,000 house in 2022, in 2023, it's probably closer to 170000 175000 so with that value increase, even though the rate is going down, the taxes will go up about $150. That's the your part, market that's the, value increases. <laughs> because of the market value That's the part increase. I hope yeah. the journal puts in bold right. lettering. <laughs> because your market <laughs> value is increasing. So your rate change is being reduced, but your market value and the amount you would make on your house if you sell your house goes up. Therefore, your taxes proportionally. This is a slide I debated whether or not to put in because I know it's hard to compare mm -hmm. communities because you they all budget differently. Some people have park and rec in their budget. Some people don't. Um, so, but still, I think this slide really speaks loudly and it's one that people look at and they, and they you know, they tell us about all the time. So uh, the Minnesota Department of Revenue only had the 2021 rates available. So looking at the city of New Ulm in comparison to other communities in 2021, we did have the highest city rate. We weren't necessarily the highest total rate for those communities um, because their counties or their school districts may have a higher rate than, than the city, but um, you can see where we sat. And if you look at that, um, New Ulm compared to like Hutchinson, our city taxes make up half of the property taxes, whereas in Hutchinson, it's only 40%. So it, it's kind of deciding and, and where we want to be this year and how we use that tax capacity to maybe control that rate or to leave the rate the same or, you know, where you want to go with that in comparison to what some of the other communities may be. 
And then I, I would just like to kind of echo um, what Nicole said. We we do have the opportunity opportunity now um, with that um, uh, with the the home value increase to really look at that rate. Um, you know, right now at the twelve point four nine um, levy increase, we're at almost negative you know three percent for the tax rate. Um, you know, my recommendation would be to look at getting that down to, you know, 10 to 8%, somewhere in that range, to help lower that. Because, you know, when we're looking at um, inflation right now, it's still hovering around 8.3. We can get uh, our tax rate down to, you know, 5 or 6% kind of help off, offset that for our owners and helps us get more and more. Uh, or not more, more I've never done this before, but Chris, uh, the uh, audience or us who can't understand the words you're saying. You're cutting out. You kind of. Okay. There Not a problem. There okay. you go. Okay. Perfect. Uh, I'll just move. Eat the, eat the computer. Um, so, you know, looking forward again, I would, I would recommend just kind of setting, um, approving um, the levy as is so mm -hmm. it gives you wiggle room. But between now and then, look at that and look at, you know, what. We as a city want to do as far as helping the property owners, the taxpayers out by reducing um, our tax rate a little. Mm -hmm. Get the levy down Again, Chris, we, we can't hear a word you're saying. You. Okay. I'm literally in the mic now. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's just. So yeah, it, it's just getting the levy down by December, somewhere mm -hmm. at that ten eight to ten percent range to mm -hmm. offset inflation. Um, you know, get it close to that um, six ish percent, um, five to six percent uh, tax rate decrease. So, food for thought. Between now and then, we'll have that additional work study session in November um, to go over some of the projects and really look at wants versus needs um, when we make that mm -hmm. final decision in December. You know, a comment to go along with Chris's statement, <clears throat> I've been looking at a lot of data, what the other cities are going through right now. What I'm seeing, Norm is kind of right in the middle. Mm -hmm. We're not in bad shape. We're, we're in good financial shape. And, and I get where he's coming from. If we can get to that 8 to 10, if we can make it happen, mm -hmm. that's my goal. I guess just looking at it right now, I don't really see it as a as a need to have two leaf vacuums at $260,000. That's just, I don't know. I was going to you know, suggest that we kind of move forward with this, and then as we go through the planning, yeah, maybe right. I would like to have some conversations with Jeff about, well, you know, if the timing is right for this, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if it's something that would be more sensible to, you know, really prepare for and just add maybe in for next year, but um, I... I will say, you know, that's that is one one area I see. You know, I know Les has been wanting to do this for so long, and he, you know, he wants to get it done, and it would be great to have these. But you know, until we have a plan for this, I'm not just going to throw this in there and, and up our levy because of it. I mean, like I said, it's going to be a good thing for the city, you know, when when we do it the right time. But I don't want to put the leaf blower before the or whatever, however you want to say it. Uh, so that would be one potential area. But again, today we would just be approving right. kind of the preliminary stuff. But I think we uh, we already have three counselors in agreement that um, it'll be discussed. It'll be heavy discussed at the work further session. as we move forward. So again, this is just uh, you know a preliminary approval so that we can move forward with um, Nicole working her magic for us like she always does. We appreciate the work you put into this, Nicole, and, and I wholeheartedly agree. We'll have more discussions on if there's things that we can trim or, or fix, but I, th I think right now, if we are all in agreement, I'll offer the resolution, waive the reading, accepting the preliminary 2023 budget for the City of New Ulm, the total appropriations of $23,522,185 and maximum property tax levy, levy of $9,582,826 and set the public hearing date for December 6, 2022 at 6 p.m. and the continuation public hearing for December 13th, 2022 at 6 p.m. if needed to consider the 2023 budget. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any additional discussion? Director Jorgensen, please call the roll. <clears throat> Councilor Wormka? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. And President Betker? Yes, that motion does carry.
Item number 6.5, Public Works Chip Spreader Emergency Repair. Mr. Hoffman. Madam President, City Councils, um, our 2006 chip spreader is in the need of a new computer, and with that new computer, it has to be updated where they have to put new drive motors, new harness, new... It's a lot of work that needs to be done on it in, a, in the tune of 60 or 59, 3 or 562, and we're just asking for approval for the fix it, because it, it, it's in good shape, yet there's only 763 hours on it, and... It's due to be replaced in 2026, but with this repair, we would push it out to 2031, give it another five years on it, so it would be another nine years after this repair, because right now it's useless. It, it, it doesn't even move right now, so it's kind of, we're kind of stuck with it. And the good news is we have a really healthy 601 file, so yep. I'll, I'll approve uh, the repair of the chip shredder for the Public Works Department in the amount to $59,592. Second. We do have a motion and a second. Any additional discussion? Um, I just have one question. What does a new chip spreader cost? <laughs> I'm just curious because if the computer the projected cost in 2026 was 520,000. Okay, so yep. Um, all right, that's all I needed. You told me what I needed to hear. Um, any additional discussion? All right, um, those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed. That motion does carry. Item number 6.6, .6, Park and Rec Donations. Okay, I'll read through it as fast as I can. <laughs> Offer the resolution, way of the reading, accepting donations offered to the city and home through the Park and Rec Department as outlined. Uh, Herman Heights Paver Stones, $200 honoring Denny and Arlene Manderfeld. $200 honoring uh, Jerome and Marcella Reese. $200 honoring Peter and Dorothy Weniger. Uh, German Park Overbay Bench, $86 from Sarah Duklick. German paper stones, two hundred dollars. Oh, that's in there again. Herman Heights different, and German Park. Different park. Different park. Yeah. Okay, German Park pavers, <laughs> two hundred dollars are honoring Denny and Arlene Manderfeld. Highland Park, adopt a park, forty-four dollars and ninety-nine cents from the MRCI Tracy Windshadle. North Park batting cages surfacing, five thousand from the New Orleans Junior Baseball Association. Neils Park, adopt a park, a hundred dollars from Bank Midwest. Neal's Park, two trees, $400 honoring Bob Eichton and Anna Beeble. Riverside Park, uh, an archstone bench honoring Mike Grausem and Kathy Grausem. And for the grand total of $6,430.99. Second. We do have a motion and a second. Any additional discussion? Um, I will just say, correct, um, honoring Mike Grausem from Kathy Grausem, not both, but just cut that. Um, any additional discussion? Director Jorgensen, please call the roll. Councillor Warmka? Yes. Councillor Mack? Yes. Councillor Christian? Yes. And President Betker? Yes, that motion does carry. With no additional business, this meeting is adjourned. That was good. That's all right.